Okay, they ask us in 8 to sketch this quadratic form which is about orthogonally diagonalizing the right matrix. Okay, so these questions take a long time. So we've got to write that quadratic form out in with the matrix, the matrices and stuff. And then we've got to diagonalize the matrix, change the variables, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so the quadratic form is, we have is x squared plus z squared minus 2xy plus 2yz equals 0. So... So x squared plus z squared minus 2xy plus 2yz equals 0. Okay, at least there's no terms with just x, just x on its own or y on its own, on its own. That's, that'll make it a bit simpler. It'll make it simpler to the origin. Okay, so we want to write this with vector like x, the vector x, y, z multiplied by this is three variables x, y, and z yeah hmm. right, three variables oh, that sucks I want x, yeah, x, y, and z okay so, x, y, z here we have x, y, z, three variables so it's a three by three matrix uh, equals zero so here we puts now that's the x squared term, that's the y squared term, there's none, that's the z squared term. Then we have minus 2xy, so that we're going to have minus 1 and minus 1 to come to minus 2. And then yz, that's here, we have two of that, so it's 1 and 1. And there's no, there's no xz term, so that's 0 and that's 0. Okay, so that is a symmetric matrix, of course. Uh, so we've got to diagonalize it. So you start off by working out the characteristic polynomial, right? Okay, then we've got to calculate, you know, work this out. So we've got to factorize this basically to solve it. So we could do some glass reduction and stuff. That might help. Um, what could we do? Maybe if we do, if we do, if we, if we, if we added row two to row, row if we added row one to row two, we would have minus one minus lambda, and no, that wouldn't work. If, if we added, ah, uh, let's add. Yes, let's add row one to row three. Okay, so let's make, I mean, column three, sorry. Let's make column three, I'm going to add column one to it. Okay, so that doesn't change the determinant. Right, the actual value of the determinant, so it's equal. And then now we have, here we have one minus lambda, zero, one minus lambda. Okay, and that's nice because now we can factorize out the 1 minus lambda from the last column. And we're left with 1 minus lambda minus 1, 0, minus 1 minus lambda, 1, and here we have 1, 0, 1. Okay, it makes things a bit simpler. Now, what could we do? Okay, it'd be nice to get. Is there another thing where we can do a factorization like this? Um, so what if we, no, those other things aren't going to work nicely. So is there a place where we can get a row, which just make it so that one a row or a column has mostly zeros in it, two zeros in it? We could try adding the second row, the third row to the first row, no. Try adding, adding the third column to the second column. So you have, you have zero, then a minus lambda, then two. That wouldn't really help. Ah, oh, but you could do that. Then you could do another. Then you could add the the second row on as well. So 
Let's, let's, let's do that. Let's do. Uh, I think we can get rid of the. Yeah, we can get rid of the. In the middle column, we can get rid of the the one at the bottom by adding. We can get rid of the one at the top. Let's say by adding. Row one, we can add onto it row three. And thus we get, doesn't change the actual value of the determinants. We get 1 minus lambda, 0. Is this the right thing to do? Wait a second. What if I rather than that, what if I rather did row 1 minus row 3, right? That will immediately make it give me some zeros. So we have 1 minus lambda, then row 1 minus row 3, so we have 1 minus lambda, minus 2, of 0, minus 1, minus lambda, 0, 0, 1, 1. Okay, so now we can calculate the determinant now by expanding down the third column, which means, and then the determinant will become, uh, the 1 minus lambda stays, but now the determinant now will just be well, that's a 1 there, on the, it's on the diagonal, it's a 1, it's an even entry, so it'll just be the minor of that entry, of row 3, column 3. Okay, so now we can work out this, right? Uh, so, is there a way of working out this, of simplifying this nicely? If we added, if we added, if we added row 2 to row 1, we'd end up with, no. If we subtracted row 2 from row 1, we would have 2 minus lambda minus 2 plus lambda. Yes, that's good. So row 1 plus... No, sorry. I, I said row 1 minus row 2. Okay? So that gives us... Okay, it's down to 1 minus lambda. And then we have 2 minus lambda. And here we have minus 2 plus lambda. And we still have the 1 minus 1 minus lambda. Okay, now we can factorize out... 2 minus lambda. So we have 1 minus lambda, factorize out the 2 minus lambda from the top row, and the rest becomes 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus lambda. Okay, and now we can calculate that directly, right? 1 minus lambda, 2 minus lambda. Um, then this, the, that determinant of what there is, minus lambda, minus lambda, and then plus 1, but the minus is coming back backwards, so it's, then it's minus 1 minus lambda. Okay. So, the eigenvectors are distinct, and they are they are 2, they are 1, 2, and minus 1. Okay. So now we need to work out those eigenvalues. Now we need to work out eigenvectors. Okay. So, for the first eigenvector, uh, or I'm going to say the first call the first one lambda one. That now, if you write down the eigenvector equation, so the matrix was what was one minus we got was one minus one zero, one. Oh, sorry, we want actually the matrix with the minus in the lambda. So we have so our lambda is one. So we have one minus one is zero. So we have zero minus one zero. Then we have minus 1, minus 1, 1. Minus 1, minus 1, 1. And then we have 0, 1, 0. 0, 1, 0. That multiplied, that multiplied by the eigenvector gives you 0. So we could try and solve this with the row reduction again. So let's do... Let's do... Um, row 1 plus row 3, and also row 2 plus row 3. So that would become 0, 0, 0. Um, minus 1, 0, 1, and 0, No, and then zero one zero. Yes, sorry. 
Okay, say the zero three say its name didn't change it. Okay. So this is saying that v one is this is one free variable. Of course, you'd expect that. Um, so it's going to be one vector. Of course, it must be because it's the eigenvalue with the, it was a single eigenvalue. It wasn't repeated, and it says that we need something like one and minus one there, and zero there. Okay, let's check that. So we have we take the matrix we had, which was the original matrix, which is one minus one zero. One minus one zero, and minus one zero one. Minus one zero one. And zero one one, zero one one. We multiply this by one zero minus one. What do we get? We get on the top. We get one minus one minus one. Oh dear, there's an error somewhere. Ah, it's not one minus one. It's just one one. Yes, because we have minus one one there. Okay, so we have one zero one. Okay, so top row stays the same. Next row, minus one, plus one, zero. Final row, one. Cool, that which is indeed one times, which is eigenvalue, one times the original matrix times the eigenvector. Okay, so that checks out. So that is indeed an eigenvector. Next eigenvector. So I'm going to use the eigenvalue. And just I'm just going to call the second one. I'm going to make the second one not... Yeah, no, I'm going to make the second one... Oh, whatever. The second one is two. Okay. Okay. So, of course, the order doesn't matter. Just an aesthetic choice. Okay. So, we've got a. We'd have what? The eigenvector equation will become using using two now. So we have one minus two. So you have minus one minus one zero. It's one minus one zero. Then. Using two, so we have minus one, minus two, one. Minus one, minus two, one. And then we have zero, one, minus one. Zero, one, minus one. Okay, multiply that by. Oh, we don't hit. Multiply that by the currently unknown eigenvector, which we're going to try and work out. And you get zero. So, guys, so uh, row reduce. Okay. So we can do, we could do, we could times row one by a negative number. We could do row two minus row one, and that's all for now. So we get one one zero here. We get zero, and then we get then we have what? So we have minus one plus one zero. We have minus two plus one is minus one, and that stays the same. And uh, zero one minus one. Okay. Now we could do. Row three plus row two. That'll change that to zeros. Uh, we could do row one plus row two to get the thing above the pivots. What's going to be the pivots? Zero and times row two by a negative number, by a negative one to make it make its pivot positive. So row row one plus row two will become one zero one. Row three plus row two will get zero zero. Zero, and row two will become zero, one, one. Okay. So that means that the eigenvector v two will be. We need one and minus one there. And it's the second row is saying that the second value is this is saying that. It's saying that. The second row. Of this vector, the second row is equal to the negative of the third row, so that would be one. Okay, let's check that. So we want to take this original matrix, one minus one zero, minus one zero one, zero one one, and multiply it by one one minus one, and we get what we get. Oh dear. We're gonna get we're gonna start off by getting zero there. We don't want zero, we want two. 
what's the mistake? So, ah, when I times R2 by negative, I should have times by negative there. Yes, OK. And that means that that changes sign as well, because it's actually saying the column row 2 is equal to row 3. OK, cool. So now we do it. OK, so we get 1 times, OK, 1 plus 1, which is 2. Yay. We get minus 1, minus 1, which is minus 2, minus 1, minus 1, minus 2. Yes, that is indeed 2 times the eigenvector. So this eigenvector, the second eigenvector, is correct. OK, now we've got to do the third eigenvector. So V3. Ah, start off with the third eigenvector, lambda 3, which was uh, minus 1, right? Yes, OK. So to the end of the equation, the eigenvector equation. Um, well, it's not the eigenvector equation, it's an eigenvector equation with the things taken to both sides. So we have 1 minus, minus 1, it's 1 plus 1. So we have 2 minus 1, 0 is the first column. 2 minus 1, 0. Then the second column, we have... Minus one, minus one, one, one. Minus one, one, one. Then the third column, we have zero, one, zero. No, sorry, it's that it's one minus lambda, but lambda is minus one, so we have four. one plus one, so we have two. What, zero, one, two, in the third column. Yeah, zero, one, two in the third column. OK, times by this eigenvector is 0. Let's uh, row reduce. So we could do row 1 plus, go away, plus 2 times row 2. Uh, should we leave it at that for now? Yes, let's leave it at that for now. And so that'll make it, give it allow us, that'll become zero. And you have minus one plus two is one, and zero plus two is two. And then you have minus one, 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 zero, one, two. V3 equals zero. Okay. Oh, this question is so, these questions are so long. It's ridiculous. I need to carry on on a third piece of paper. Um, and you know what, actually, I don't like this as the first step for, gas for the gas reduction. I think I would prefer just to first start off by, ooh, by swapping row 1 and row 2. Okay, so we have minus 1, 1, 1, 2, minus 1, 0, 0, 1, 2, times the third eigenvector equals 0. Okay. I'm just going to write that down separately so that I can carry it over to the next page. Okay. So what we had, we had I had minus one two zero one minus one 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 zero two times b three equals zero. Okay. Now I could do I could do row two plus 2 times row 1, and I can do I can times row 1 by negative, num by negative 1. And that's all. I'll leave that for now. Uh, so row 2 will become 0, then minus 1 plus 2 is 1, and 0 plus 2 is 2. Row 3 stays the same, of course. And row 1, top signs, 1 minus 1 minus 1, times v3 equals 0. Now we could do row 3, minus row 1, and also let's do row 1, sorry, row 3 minus row 2, and we can also do row 1 plus row 2 to get rid of that one that's above the pivot. Uh, so we're going to have row 1 becomes 1, 0, so minus 1 plus 2 is 1, and we have 0, 1, 2, and then we have 0, 0, 0, times v3 equals 0. Okay, so now we can see that v3 is uh, 
uh, so the top and bottom need opposite signs and then the second row is saying that the second row is saying that you know, the second row is minus two times the third row so that'll be two because you have minus one there in the third row let's check it so the original matrix times by what we think is the eigenvector so the original matrix was it was 1 minus 1, 0. I'll write it down separately. 1 minus 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. Okay. So 1 minus 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. Okay, so you do this multiplication, you get, you start off with 1 minus 2, which is minus 1. Yeah, it's what you want. Minus 1 minus 1, which is minus 2. Yeah, it's what you want. 2 minus 1, which is 1. Yes, that, that indeed is minus 1 times V3. So this third thing is indeed... We do have the right eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Okay, so we've got the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Now what are we going to do with them? We are going to use them to orthogonally diagonalize this matrix. So, let me let me call this matrix something. Okay, let me call this matrix A. So the matrix was, I wrote it down separately, so it's minus 1, minus 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1 was the matrix. And now we have the, the that the D will be the eigen the eigenvalues. Ooh, we need to orthogonally diagonalize it. Shit. So we actually need to orthogonalize all these all these all these eigenvectors. Okay. So we don't want V three, we want V three divided by its magnitude. So uh, let's call the orthogonalized ones like U one, U two, U three. Okay, so U one. So so V one Let's not write like that, rather. There needs to, need to put a new variable in there. We're looking, what we want to now get is the orthogonalization of V1, so that's V1 over the magnitude of V1, right? What is the magnitude of V1? So V1 was 1, 0, 1, so the magnitude is um, square root of 2. Okay. So it's... 1 over the square root of 2 times 1, 0, 1. Uh, V2 over the magnitude of V2. What was V2? V2 was 1 minus 1 minus 1. So the magnitude of that is square root of 3. Sorry, what was it? It was 1, one minus 1 minus 1, right? Yes. Minus one, minus one, and then v three over its magnitude, one two minus one, so it's what it's one plus two squared, so well, square root of six. Yeah, one over the square root of six times by one two minus one. Okay, let me just take off this. So. Oh, so I'm orthogonalizing them already because I know that they, I already know that they're normal to each other. They're all orthogonal to each other. Yeah, sorry. I'm not orthogonalizing. I know they're all, these vectors, eigenvectors are orthogonal to each other because they have different eigenvalues. And if you have different eigenvalues, then you must then the, like, the eigenvectors for those are orthogonal. Eigenspaces are orthogonal. Distinct eigenspaces are orthogonal to each other. So we just need to normalize them. So there they're normalized. Um, I can actually write them in a form that will make making, writing the matrix a bit easier, I think, because... I want to put them all over the square root of 6, yes. So I want to say that this is actually 1 over the square root of 6, but now we times it, put, you know, root 3, 0, root 3, right? That will work out. Because root 3 over root, root 6 is root 2 times root 3. Okay, yeah. Uh, this v, 
the second one now was similar sort of thing, but now the other factor that's missing is root two. And the final one is stays the same, so I'll just leave it. Okay. So this means that our p should be these th with these three matrices as its columns. So root six like that, and then root. Th oh, let's call it q. It's traditional to call it q when it is um, when it is a monorthogonal matrix. I.e., when it's when its uh, columns are orthonormal vectors as they are by design here. Okay, so that's what Q is. Um, that means that Q transpose will be just the transpose of that, which I'll just write down. Three, uh, six, three, zero, root three is first row. Root two, minus root two, root minus root two again, and then one, two, minus one. Okay. Ah, now excuse me while I fix this page, which is weird. Um, the lines are all wrong on this page. Okay, so make some more pages. Um, make them have the right size lines. Okay, so now we're down here. Um, got Q and Q transpose. And then D, of course, will be the eigenvalues in the same order that I put them for the eigenvectors. So it's, uh, what was it? It was it was 1, 2, and minus 1. That's D. Oh, and the A, the original matrix we had was 1, minus 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 1. The original symmetric matrix we, we, we designed to write down this write down this uh, quadratic equation write down this uh, quadratic form okay now the point is we know that q transpose a q equals d okay and the original equation we had was gonna was like a small x transpose a x equals uh, was it zero on the right? I think it was. Back to original equation. Oh, sorry. The, mat the matrix equation we wrote down. Yes, it was zero on the right. Okay. So we can if Q transpose Q equals D, then that means that times both sides by Q on the left and by Q transpose on the right. So we have that A equals Q, D, Q transpose. Okay, so that means that X transpose, hmm. What's going wrong here? I want, look, I want to get this to become X transpose, Q transpose, A, Q, X equals zero. Oh, sorry, not Q transpose. D, I want, then I want D. That's what, that's what I want to get. So for, for that to be the case, I want A to actually equal Q transpose. I want A to be like that. Right? Um, is it actually like that? Have I is, is is this original equation I wrote down wrong? So for a to be like that, a to a to be q transpose dq, that would mean we'd have we'd have q a because q transpose is the inverse of of, of q because it's an orthogonal matrix dq. Hmm. That doesn't look right. The matrix equation generally is like a q, and that represents a matrix times each column being an eigenvector equals, and then q d, and that represents each eigenvector being multiplied by by 
by the eigenvalue. And so that means that A equals Q D Q transpose, right? You times on the right by Q transpose, you times times on the right by Q by Q transpose, and you get Q D Q transpose, yes. So what's going on? Why is this not working out nicely? We have X transpose AX. And it looks like it's becoming it's actually becoming it's becoming this, which is not what we want. You have a q equals q d because a is like a times the eigenvectors and that's q d. You multiply on the right by q transpose to get rid of that q, and then you get q d q transpose. And you say, oh well, in that x transpose a x we had, right, let's just change that a to q d q transpose. It's because it's that's what it's equal to, and that gives you this equation. Well, let's let's just carry on like this. Let's see what happens. So. I'm saying that I'm saying that what I found right is that a equals q d q transpose. Okay, I'm not sure why I'm getting confused about the the way around it's meant to be. But however, we have x transpose a x, so that's now x. Okay, so now this first term is going to be q transpose x transposed because when you transpose you swap the order of the matrices of vectors that's like you transpose okay so now we say we make a new variable uh, called big x and it's equal to q transpose times x okay in other words oh, I think this is what I think this is the issue because if x equals q transpose x then q big q x equals X. I mean, so if I say X equals QX. Okay, I think that's probably what's going on, why I'm getting confused. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, that, having that big X, that means the equation becomes X, big X transpose DX equals zero. Okay, but you multiply that multiplication now, it's now calling this big X, uh, you know, has uh, entries as big X, big Y, big Z. The diagonal only keeps the terms that are only keeps the uh, the, x, the the terms that are x squared, y squared, z squared. So you know it's just the eigenvalues were what it was. So now it's just going to be x squared. So one times x squared that's the eigenvalue plus two that that eigenvalue times y squared plus uh, oh no it's minus one minus z squared equals zero. Let me just put an underline under these vectors so that it's clear that these are vectors because I, now I'm using big X to mean so I put yeah so I, because I'm using, now using big X to mean not the vector big X but just the first component of the vector big X underlined okay so that's the quadratic form uh, now we want to check we want to we want to sketch this. So we need to look at the table first, right? To see, which is now above, which to see which one this is. So it's x squared plus 2y squared minus z squared equals 0. So let's look at the table. Let's table anything like this. Okay, the way the table works is that you would divide through by the things. So the, by the, yeah, you divide through by the things. Oh, it's not on the table, is it? Ah, it's not on the table because it's simpler than that. The table has the ones without, with constants on the right, but look, we could, ah, this is an ellipse, isn't it? No, it's not an ellipse. Wait, why am I finding not finding some table? Ah, it's, um, so the first thing is that the table has the, gives things of the form where you like now divide by the, you're going to divide everything by the two, right? So like y squared over one. Mm, minus z squared over 2, okay, equals 0. So we're looking for something like this, where we have a 0 on the right-hand side, and then 1, 1, minus 
and then plus plus minus. Okay, we had there's nothing with zero on the right hand side. Instead, this thing is the z moved to the right hand side. So let's go back here. Let's change this by moving the z to the right hand side. So this is the same as x squared over two plus y squared. Never mind that over one plus y squared equals z squared z squared over two. Okay. So back to the table. So we have what we have. We have x squared plus we're like an x squared plus y squared equals z squared. Where do we see that? Here we go. Elliptic paraboloid. X squared plus a y squared term equals a. No, that's not z squared. Elliptic cone. Here we go. X squared plus y squared term equals a z squared term. Yes. So that's the shape we have. We have an elliptic cone. Okay. So in this table, it says that. The next thing says Z being a constant cross section gives you an ellipse. So that means that in this picture, that's the Z direction. Which means that here we have the X and the Y. Okay, so we're going to sketch this thing, right? We don't actually want to sketch it on the, on the axes big X, big Y, big Z. We want to sketch it on the original axes, right? So first of all, we need to draw, let's draw those original axes in. So, um, okay, so here's, I'm not gonna, I'm sorry. Let me not do that, because that's unfair. That's an advantage I have that you, a person, you don't have if you're writing on paper, do you? So let me just turn off this thing where it automatically makes your line straight. Okay. So where are we now? Um, oh, we want to draw the first. We want to draw the R three. We want to draw R three first of all. So we're gonna have we're gonna have Z, X, and Y. So X, Y, Z. Okay. Then we want to draw the big X, big Y, big Z. So to draw that you've got to, the point is that the, the big X, the big Y, the big Z, they point in the directions of the eigenvectors. So the eigenvectors were, were what? Let me write them down separately so I don't have to keep on going back. The eigenvectors, and it doesn't matter if I take the normalized ones or not because the direction, the direction is the same regardless of whether it's normalized. So V1 was 1, 0, 1. V2 was 1, minus 1, minus 1. And V3, V3 is 1, 2, minus 1. So those are the directions in which the new coordinates are going to point in terms of the old coordinates. So where's our picture so far? Okay, so the first one, 1, 0, 1. So that's 1 in the x direction, no thing, nothing in the y direction, and then 1 in the z direction. So that's like... Along this far, along the same distance up. Hmm. Along this far, the same distance up. So you have a direction like that. Ooh. So if I draw this whole long thing, it's like like that. Okay. So that is our new that is our new x-axis. Next one is one minus one minus one. So that's one. 1, and then minus 1 in the y direction, and minus 1 in the z direction. So it's down there. So it's like this. Okay. All right. That is our new y direction. Our new z direction is 1, 2, minus 1. So that's 1 in the x direction, 2, in the y direction, so 1, 2 in the y direction, and then minus 1 in the z direction, so it's down. In the z direction, so it's like down there, so it's like, like that. Okay, that's the z. Okay, now we said that the shape was an ellipse, was a, this thing, it was, we looked it up, it was an elliptical paraboloid, elliptical cone, sorry, with the looks like ellipses when you look at it along the z-axis. So let's 
draw that. So it's going to be drawn on the big Z axis because that's you know, the shifted axis. So it's like, like this. This is the ellipse. I'm just trying to draw around the Z. And uh, then there's another ellipse here, draw around the Z. And then it's, it's got this cone shape, so it goes like in like that. Oh, and here it goes like that. OK, maybe let me actually, to make it clear that this is three, the 3D-ness of it, uh, this is like, this part is behind, you know, so it's like, this part is, you can't, you can't actually see that little bit if, you, if this cone was solid. Okay. That's this ridiculous question. Right? Let me just check that I've done all the, what it says. It, it said... It said, accurately sketch that quadratic form. But yes, we've done that. I mean, in my experience, when they do three-dimensional, they usually just describe it, not actually sketch it. But we sketched it. Oh, I should, X, Y, Z, I should just point out, I should just say that I know that what these directions are. That the X direction is, that this direction is uh, 1, 0, 1. That, that this big Y direction is 1, minus 1, minus 1. And that this, Z direction is 1, 2, minus 1. Okay.